is like, and I've seen it, a lot of people that want Jesus to serve in ministry, uh, whether, you know, they stop serving. And, you know, a lot of churches slowed down a little bit for a while, but then a lot of them didn't come back to serve. Yeah. And some of them yeah. don't serve because of fear. Maybe they got too comfortable just staying at home and, and not really being uh, engaged any longer. Um, and that's dangerous, really. We're creatures of habit. You yeah. know what I mean? And when you break that habit, I mean, <laughs> it's Very been like easy. two years. Yeah. I mean, it depends where you're at. If you're in New York or LA or, you know, somewhere that's like, super uh locked down yeah you know there's like a lot of things that are aren't aren't happening so people are like creatures of habit and it's just very easy to get out of that routine and once you break that routine it's like the gym you know yeah, yeah you, you get to the gym and you're like thing. boom boom getting it and, yeah. and you're like up at six in the morning you're just doing it you know what i mean and then all of a sudden you i don't know you go on family you go on a vacation or something and start eating some hot dogs again and then uh -huh. you just totally forget about the gym exactly <laughs> just like that but yeah we got to get in it but i believe that during this time i think that god's um i think he's just kind of he's, he's placing people mm. in in places like he's we've been through it you know we've been through this 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 time over the last two years it's been like you know like jay talk about and jane you know kind of joy when we go through the trial and tribulations you know um it, he i believe that god has taken all of us through this time he's done this work in us during the time even though you just feel maybe he hasn't done it, he's he's built you up in the holy faith he's made you stronger and now it seems to me like he wants to uh he wants to move or continue yeah. to move and he wants to do something during this time and we got to be alert we you know we've talked about you got to be like that antenna you got to be able to pick up the signal to hear his voice yeah so you can go where he tells you to go because this is the walk by faith you got to do what he's called you to do but it's 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 literally just hearing that voice and and how do we hear that voice is it's being uh plugged in and i you know during this this, this last couple of years you know i've been through i've been through so many different things in my life over the last couple of years so many different transitions of of things that i've been navigating through on all levels of of life but the one thing that I always have to focus on is you have to continue to make that time, no matter what, to plug in. Like you've got to read the Bible. You, you know, if you can't read the Bible, make sure you got that app. You know, uh, I got the K-Wave app, uh, Bible teachers, you know, around the clock. Um, some, some of my favorite Bible teachers are, are definitely on that station. And you just download it and you plug it in, you listen to a study. Every 30 minutes, there's a new study. Um, there's other Bible teachers like uh, I've been listening. I like Tony Evans, uh, brother, brother Tony Evans. You ever listen to him? He, he was just on. I was just listening was he? to him. Yeah. <laughs> He's on, uh, on K -Way. On he was coming on right before us. Yeah, right on. Yeah, no, uh, love, uh, Tony Evans. He's a holy ghoster and uh, he has a lot of very life practical stuff. But you know, you got to switch it up. Like if you're in a rut, you got to switch up your worship, you got to switch up your Bible, your, your pastors you're listening to, um, you know. Whatever it is that you got to freshen it up. And, and when you do that, God's going to, God uses different pastors at different times to speak to, to certain things. Like when I'm just like, when I just need that solid Bible teaching, like, like verse by verse, chapter by chapter, I plug into some of the Calvary guys, you know, mm -hmm. Chuck Smith, or I got the, you know, the, the, what's, what's the Bible? What's the word for today? Word for is today. that what it's called? Yeah. The word for today. It's all of Chuck Smith stuff. And then you has the different series, but then like, you know, if I just need to get like all fired up and, and just like, like, just like, uh, I don't know, Tony Evans, he's like a, he's like a faith builder. You know, I, I don't know how he, the way he preaches, yeah. it just, it'll just like, it's short, powerful, and it'll get you excited about Jesus. You know what I mean? Because the life application stuff, the way mm. he puts things, but it's important. God wants to do something with you now. He's ready to move, but we have to hear and he'll speak through like, just like right now we're talking. Right now, we are talking to people that are in this place, and they're like, this is making sense. This is me. This is what I've been feeling inside of me I need to do, but I haven't done it. This is just confirmation mm -hmm. of what's going on, yeah. and that's what God does, and this is how he uses you. But he wants to do something. He wants to use you, and you might be in a rut. Jesus has called us to walk by faith. <laughs> Let's talk, Sean, about some stories, about some practical life application stories about uh, walking by faith. Like what, what are some cool stories that you can encourage people on the show with where, you know, you are praying about something. Cause I feel like there's people want to make moves right now. 
Mm-hmm. You know, some people want to move out of California. Um, some people want to move jobs. Some people want to make moves and get back into certain doing ministry stuff. Um, some people need to move with their kids. Like when I say move with their kids, like what sport are you going to put them into? What schools am I going to place them into? Homeschool, private. If you got a lot of money, private school. Mm-hmm. You know, private schools are expensive. Very expensive. My goodness gracious. I got to get another job. <laughs> I got four kids. Yeah. <laughs> dude that's not there's no way can't do it so uh homeschool is a good option or you know charter school or or whatever we're looking at different things but um but what i'm saying is right now people may be praying and god's not answering Mm. what are some scenarios some situations that you have been in and how you were looking for an answer to make a move in your life how did god answer and we can talk about from like meeting your girl to jobs to you know, getting involved in ministry, just yeah. life application stuff. Yeah. I think um, for me, I'll, I'll go real quick. Like even just getting married, like I never thought that we got, I, we got a lot of time. I, I, I would never think that um, when I came to the Lord, like I was in some toxic relationships and the girl I was with at that time was what well, wasn't good for me. And the Lord removed that person within a couple months of me coming to the Lord. And then I got real serious in my relationship with God. And, you know, I'd been in relationships off and on since I was 14 years old. And sometimes girls would make me go sideways sometimes, you know, like, and I, one thing I didn't want to do was hinder what God was doing in my life. I didn't want anything that was going to pull me away from what God was doing in my life. And a couple of years after being in ministry, the Lord brought uh, my wife to me, Nicole, but you know, I fought it. I fought it. Like we were together for a few months and then we broke up or I was like, I didn't want, I, I felt like my, my mind was getting cloudy and you know, my, my thing was like, I'm just going to go do ministry and we'll see what happens. Uh, but how it went down was I remember like I was praying. I needed a, a complete clear answer. I remember where I was at. Like I, I came to a place where I felt like I had to make a decision of this relationship. I don't want to string her along. I don't want to be a jerk. Uh, although I, I also wanted to know for myself, like who, who I want to make a mistake. And I remember being in the sanctuary during the day at uh, Golden Springs. I was just praying like, Lord, you know that I've made so many foolish decisions when it comes to relationships. You have to make it so clear and so obvious that this is the woman you have for me because I will make stupid mistakes. And I remember I left. A, I, and, and on yeah. top of it, you don't want to get in a situation that is not of God because then that's going to be a mistake. Exactly. You know what I mean? No, I've said this often. You know, some people say, man, the worst thing in life is being single. Being single is like, no, the worst thing is being in a relationship with somebody you're not supposed to be, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people hinder their lives, you know? And you know the person isn't right for you. This is a good way to understand if a person is right for you. Does that person draw you closer to the Lord or away from the Lord? And they can be a Christian. They could be in the church, but... You, you, your relationship might be unbalanced. And fortunately for me, that, that day, the Lord spoke. There was, it was like the Lord brought me to a particular scripture in, in Psalm 37. And I read it. I'm just like, man, it just clicked, made sense. And I texted it to her. Then I said, Lord, I, I, I'm stubborn. I'm hard-headed. I need something else. Like, you got to step it up a little bit more, a little bit more clear. And there another verse that, from Psalm 118. Um the Lord put together. And again, I sent it to her. And then her response was like, no way. Like that's something that the Lord gave me when we got back together. And also um, something the Lord gave her that day. And I remember coming back and we had a conversation. And as I'm talking with her, the exact scripture that the Lord gave me that day was on her journal, on her desk. Like exactly. Um, I looked at her Bible. She showed me and like she had had it dated and underlined. And again, it was what it was was it was just god speaking you know it was the basis of it in psalm 37 was trusting in the lord commit your works to the lord and your thoughts will be established basically um and psalm 118 was this is the day the lord has made i I rejoice and be glad in him and it was just exactly what i needed that time i remember going to the gym that night i was with scott salamette and I told him this whole thing, how things started connecting. And now I had this rest and this peace. And he's like, so what are you going to do? I go, I think I'm going to marry her. And my. That's your mommy's talking yeah. about. And I remember, <laughs> I remember like it just a, a switch flipped. 
there was such a, a focus, such a clarity, like this is the, the woman that God has brought into my life. And then in a few months or a little, a couple months of, yeah, we were engaged by the end of the year. We were married. Now we have three amazing children. And I'd say amazing. It may drive me crazy sometimes. Great, but great, crazy, amazing. It's been a blur. Amazingly ever, crazy. It's been a blur ever since. And then just like life, just ministry. Yeah. Like yeah. when I was, when I got married, Ryan, like you weren't walking with God. You actually came to the Lord about a, a, a month after. So ministry was different. Like I'm still trying to find my way, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I had opportunities to teach and minister. Those I was a trip for me. Those are big things in my life where it was like I was inadequate when it came to speaking. You felt that same way. Oh um, yeah, heck no. You know, I was a horrible student. Never liked to speak in front of public, but it was one of those things that I had to learn. And this is something that has impacted my life in every area. It, well, let me just clarify for the listening honor. Yeah. You're talking about two guys that right now they're in the studio that were the 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 the. <laughs> The outcast in school and like yep. sitting in the back, not definitely not up front trying to draw attention to themselves. No, nope. you know, trying to definitely ditch, not trying to academics. ditch school, trying to get away from all that kind of stuff. So, book speaking and being in front of an audience was uh -huh. definitely not the uh, you know, I, I talk about it in my book. Uh, when I used to, um, when we used to host those events, those big like uh, college events, you know, the snowboard of yeah. all the colleges go like to, yeah. Uh, Squaw Valley, we, we with snowboard brands, we'd host those events, and I'd have to get up and and give away a snowboard on stage, and I'd have to drink so much alcohol <laughs> to even get on that stage and grab the mic just to give away a a snowboard. You know what I mean? Like I would, I was not getting on that thing sober. Yeah. Got to be at least ten beers deep for <laughs> sure at that point. So, yeah. no, it, you know, I but God I, did it in you. Yeah, yeah, you know, with my wife, with all of that, but also it was being used by God, Scott Salomon threw me in the mix to like to teach on a Sunday morning. And I remember I was so petrified, nervous, a bunch of punk high school kids that don't want to be there really, you know, and speaking there, I remember having the feeling like when I started to speak, like I was going to pass out, like I was seeing spots, like I was so nervous in, in, in my, in my heart. And I remember leaving that day, said, I'll never teach again. I'll never speak again. That, that's not my wheel. Well, and then a couple kids, like, liked it encouraged me or whatever and then i had this this moment with god that week and i was just like lord kind of like what you talk about in the garden of gethsemane thing mine was like i i knew that the lord had opened this door for me to do this and i was totally out after my comfort zone but my prayer was this lord whatever you call me to do if someone asked me to teach I, i'm gonna do it i'll be obedient i don't want to i'm nervous about it but whenever you open the door, I'm going to walk through those doors. And after that time, it was just opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to where you actually saw, I saw the gifts of the Holy Spirit working through my life, like with boldness, with assurance, with clarity. And what it does though, in other areas of my life, walking in faith, whether it's married, whether it's dealing with finances, we're dealing with decisions now for my kids. Where, where it's dealing with major decisions and, and helping with stuff with your dad and with Dale. Like I, I need a lot of wisdom in my life. And I always know that the Lord will always give us that, that source of light source that is needed. Yep. Yep. No, for sure. I, you know, when we get back from the break in a couple of minutes, I want to talk about how to get confirmation between you and your wife when you're trying to make decisions. Cause that's yeah. big decisions. You got, it's like, you got to both have, have peace. I had to figure that out. We have one minute till the break. Um, I do want to plug uh, the book, the Kill the Noise book, Finding Meaning Above the Madness. This book, my book, could not be more timely uh, than the time we are living. It's on Amazon. Um, you can buy it there. Uh, what is it? Um, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, everywhere you buy books. Or you can buy it at the whosoevers.com. Uh, God, God has been good. It's got five stars, amazing reviews. And it's transforming lives. And that's why it exists. I wrote it as a discipleship faith building tool that will talk through stories, have Bible teaching that will uh, develop your faith. The whosoever's we are still touring all across the nation. We haven't stopped. We won't stop. Contact us, book us at the whosoever's.com. And we will be back in two minutes right after the break. Peace. More 
of The Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. Now back, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. Yo, we are back in studio. I got Sean McKeon, Cone McKeon, and the myth, the legend. <laughs> you know the name. That's uh, Sean's son, which is how old, Ian? 12. 12 years old. 12. I remember 12. Yes, sir. Man, those are the good years. So, Sean, right before the break, we were talking about the, uh, the faith. Mm -hmm. We were talking about... Um, getting confirmation from yeah. God and waiting and, and just having him confirm stuff. Now, you know, when you're trying to make moves with your, your family um, and you know, when you're trying to do stuff, it's like, you want confirmation when you're married, you want God to give, like sometimes I'm taught, let me just use a life application. Sometimes I'm praying to God to get an answer on something. And he could be speaking to me, but I don't really, I can't really decipher if it's him or if it's mm -hmm. my thoughts. Like that's always the hardest part because the person of the Holy spirit, when you have the Holy spirit, he's the person that's inside of you. So he gives you promptings or he gives you thoughts, but you have to decipher between what is the Holy spirit and what is your thoughts. Yeah. Right. Sure. And that's always the hardest thing, but you learn how to hear God's voice as you walk with God. Just like when a baby, when they first have, learn how to walk, you have the parent there that's with them that teaches them how to walk. Yeah. Right. And it's, yeah. they teach them in the same way as you walk with God, God teaches you how to walk with them and how to hear his voice. But sometimes it's hard because the signal, it gets cloudy or you're like, was that me or that's him? And when you're going to make a big decision, you better know it's him because you don't want to make the wrong decision. Right. So, you know, I, I'll ask my wife, like, hey, you know, we're we're talking about doing something, but like, what's God speaking to you? Because I want to make sure that we're on the same page. And, you know, we've heard Chuck Smith say over and over, like, God has our, our phone number and God has their phone number. Yeah. And he'll speak just like you were just that illustration you just used of, Nicole. you know, your wife, God gave you, gave her the verse and then gave you the verse. And that's how you knew. But yeah, there was something that we've been, me and my wife were praying about recently. And I'm like, man, I just feel like God's not like normally when God speaks to me on, on big moves, it's like laid out. Like, I just know, you know, anything big, it's like, he'll, 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 he'll lay it out. And I'll just know that I know. And he'll confirm like several times. I'm just like, yeah, like I'm, this is it. 
But this one thing, it's like I just kept kept getting this sense of like, you have to step out by faith. Mm. And I'm like, that's weird. I just like I had to like, he's not like speaking. The only thing he's prompting me is like to step out by faith, but I'm not like hearing like do this, you know? Yeah. So then I'm like, Crystal, is God speaking to you? I'm this, and she's like, I don't know. I just feel like he just wants us to step out by faith. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, that's cool. That that's confirmation, but that's not really the kind of confirmation I yeah. wanted. <laughs> I wanted the answer right now. <laughs> But but um, but that's how God speaks, right? Yeah, I, and I think it's it's important when you're when you're married and you're praying through things as well. You ask, you know, you pray what what God's doing in your life, and basically what I do is just I just make my decisions and I just shut off my phone and I don't let her call me and tell me that I'm wrong. No. Uh, <laughs> <That's>... um, <laughs> yeah, you know, but no, seriously, it, it's praying. I think you got to trust the Lord. You have to trust one another how God speaks and. Sometimes, like you said, it's just not clicking sometimes. And then sometimes it's stepping out by faith. I mean, I think we all can get practical lessons. I, I know for myself, when I was, we were early in our, our marriage years, we rented a couple places that we, we lived in at the time. And then it just happened like the place that we were renting was going up in price. I'm like, dude, I might want to pay rent like this high. Then at the same time, in ministry, doing what I'm doing, also just wanted to be flexible as well. So, Kind of was nervous about like trying to purchase a house or whatever. Don't want to have a huge payment. Yep. Want to stay flexible. Don't want to get in debt. And there were multiple times that I had a battle with like, well, what if this changes in the future? What if this yep. changes? And just remember, like, if God's leading you, He's gonna. You got, can't get ahead of the game and think through all these details. Is this something that God has for you right now? And now, as I look back, like we would eventually get into this process. Where we, uh, purchased our first house and what's so crazy about that is i got this house at such a low price at that time and i think it was in 2013 2014 and things were were lower than they are now um if i would have not purchased that, that house i probably wouldn't be in california because how how expensive rent is in so many places has gone up so astronomically that really as i look back now the lord spared spared us from dealing with that my, my what I was able to do and do ministry and be in a place be in a home and be able to raise my children i i bring up this because it's like a practical lesson but these practical lessons is where you see god's hand on your life you know we're in like the cable studio like when we hear the, the stories of the birth of carol chapel costa mesa and k wave and all that kind of stuff it always linked to being led by God, by making decisions, opportunity, doors opening, stepping out by faith, it might seem overwhelming. And then, wow, you see the fruit as years go by. And, you know, I look at it as for myself, like, I'm in this journey now. You're raising children, like, you know, my children always went to public school um, growing up. And then a couple of years ago, um, we were felt led to do like a hybrid kind of homeschool thing. Mm -hmm. We do it on Carol Christian, not full time. A uh, private school because I mean very expensive, uh, but this has a good base, so we've been doing that, and it's so cool that led a little bit like it costs money, so you're paying something. I'm like, oh man, like it just makes things tight. But then you're thinking about your children, you know, having a good education. I didn't want them to go to the junior high where we were close by, and then we just saw the Lord provided. Then we had the third child, and I'm like, oh my gosh, more bills, more more schooling, you know? Yeah, and then. You know, what's so cool about what God did in my life through that is that my kids started that process about a year before 2020, 2019. So when 2020 hit and the COVID stuff hit, my kids really never skipped a beat because yeah. they were already going to school one day a week. Right. They're already doing a lot of work that the whole world did. A lot of people fell behind in their education. My kids excelled in their education because they just had a good flow. So what I saw is just those practical lessons, step by faith. We saw God move in our family, and we're going through that journey right it's now. It's pretty interesting that God set you up with that because He, you know, when you when you walk with God, I know there's some verses that God gives you favor. Yes, right. Like uh -huh. He He gives favor. Like it's not. And when I'm talking about favor, it's not like. Oh, you know, God's going to, or when it talks about God blessing you, it's not like God's going to give you Ferraris because you want Ferraris or I don't know, whatever you're into, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to wear Louis Vuitton all the time. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, and Prada and God's going to bless you that way. No, it's not that. God blesses us 
and, and gives us favor where it sets you up. Like it's true, dude, California, the rent, the housing market, like, dude, it's going crazy. Just go look at what's happening on Zillow or whatever. You're just seeing market shoot through the roof. And now with inflation, it's even getting more expensive. Uh, but God set you up and got you into the, that, that, that property mm -hmm. when it was lower and he set up for this time. So you were able to, um, cause you know, rent and all that goes up like every year. If you're doing like a one year and lease it's or whatever, gone so high. it's yeah, it's, it's insanity right now. And, but God set you up in that place. He went before you and gave you favor, mm -hmm. put you in that place. But yet at the time it was a total faith because you what this what happens if that but this is why we have to know that either god is for us or he's against us right mm -hmm. yeah. but if he has called us to do something and has told us to go or make a move and we walk by faith he's gonna be there and he's already he, he's omniscient right so he's in the pre present the past and the future mm -hmm. so he's already been in the future not been but he's in the future he's already worked that out ahead of you so that's why when you step out by faith and you follow him and you like Enoch, he walked with God and he heard God. He knew God. He was with God always. And he led him and guided him in everything in his life. And that's what we as Christians is we have to be able to hear what he wants to do and to step out by faith because life is risky. Yeah. You know, um, walking by faith is risky, but also when you're not walking by faith, and you're not obeying God and doing what he's called you to do, life could be so stinking frustrating. Yeah. Because then you don't have the peace of God, right? Because you're just stuck in this like rut because you're not obeying and you're not walking by faith and you're not doing what he's called to do. And then all of a sudden you just get caught up in this like, this grind of life and there's mm -hmm. no joy, there's no happiness. And what's that verse that Jesus says, uh, uh, come to me. Oh, you uh, uh, or uh, that one, or what's the one? Uh, take my yoke upon me. It's the same one. Same one. Take my yoke upon you, um, for my burden is light. And I, but how does it go? I'll teach you how to walk. Um, well, yeah, you'll find that's for your soul. Yeah. is what he says at the end. Take my yoke upon you. That's the part I want to ex expand yeah. on. So take my yoke upon you. What what that means is like, you know, the yoke for the oxen. It's like when you have um, those the oxen or the cows. They put the yoke back. It's that one piece. Mm -hmm. And there's two of them side by side and they pull the teal or like they call it teal, like teal the ground, right? Mm -hmm. To, to, to um, open up the hard ground so they could do farming. And with God and Jesus, he's the son of God is God. Jesus is God. He basically called us to take his, our yoke upon us, his yoke upon us. So what happens is when there's a baby calf, they put the, uh, with, they put the calf with the large calf and they put the yoke on. And what happens is the, the big ox, Goes when the guy tells him to go and stops. He teaches them how to carry, uh, to carry the load. And basically, what happens is when we are walking with God in the same way, when we're when we take His yoke upon Himself and we're side by side with Him and we're seeing Him move, we're 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 stopping when He tells us to stop. He will teach you and show you how to walk with Him. And He is gentle. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna He's not gonna curse you. You know, for 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 um you know, making mistakes. Um, if you're going to make mistakes, you want to be in his will because his grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. He'll get you through and he'll teach you just like a baby learns how to walk. When he falls down, the parents not like you stupid baby. I can't believe you get <laughs> up and walk. No, what does yeah. the father or the mother do? It picks the baby back up and, and puts him on his feet. And then he walks again and he falls and they do it again. Repeat. They're there to help him. But mm -hmm. the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be unconnected to God and not stepping out by faith because this whole walk here on planet earth and especially during these times you don't want to miss what god has for you that's in these what it times comes down to. dude you got to be so tuned into god i mean honestly like yes. right now like this this is what blows my mind what really blows my mind is like you know and i know we've seen so many people walk away from god during this time mm -hmm. like dude i'm seeing like from my instagram of people that i followed that that were people got at one point and then whatever happened over the last couple of years they're like they're out to lunch yeah they're not walking with god because the bible says you will know them by their fruit right mm -hmm. a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a tr bad tree can't produce good fruit but you're seeing the way they're they're living the things that they're doing and you're just like you know i i seen these one these one people i'm like you guys are at a hotel somewhere traveling and i'm like i know you ain't buy two hotel rooms i ain't judging i'm yeah. just saying i know from yeah. the look at these pictures 
you're in the same hotel room. <laughs> exactly. So my point is, like, right now during this time, you got to be walking with God because all the end time stuff that's happening, the 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 pace of what, you know, I just read this thing on the news today. It talks about the government. They're trying to, um, I, they're trying to read something about your bank. Like the, I, the, the government is suggesting Congress is trying to pass a bill that basically you have to show the IRS. They have to have access to all your bank accounts. Mm. Yeah. I saw something that was circulating. So, so what I'm trying to say here is things without getting political, Things are getting very strange, very fast, and freedom is what we knew is transforming. And you know, going back, I like to take everything back to the Bible. No one will build a buy or sell without the mark. There's going to be a global economy, a global banking system, probably a global world, a new world order. <laughs> the word that's tossed around a lot, but all these things are being put into place. You. Right now is the time you want to walk with God and you want to go where he's told you to go and to move where he's told you to move or to stay when he wants you to stay, whatever it is, because I feel like God is moving and shaking people and put placing people right now for such a time as this. No, I agree. I agree. And that's what to be sensitive because I'm teaching the book of runs right now on Friday night. And what the verse I was going through is for those of, of um the spirit of God are led by the spirit of God. Like when, God, when you are a child of God, you are led by the spirit of God. That's how, you know, like, and I, it also says that those that live after the flesh, it leads to death. Like it's just very simple. So you have a choice, which pathway are you going to follow? You're going to follow the flesh because before in the world, everything was dictated in your life. What controlled you was how you were going to, whether it was money, whether it was, fame whether it was drugs whether it was alcohol whatever it might be these are the driving forces in your daily life but now when god's have a hold of your life it's the spirit filled life it's like lord okay what do you have for me it's it's being led by prayer you're seeing god open up doors like it's an exciting life it should be an exciting life when you see god's hand upon you upon your family upon opportunities like in your community there's so many things. If you look at things from the right perspective, it doesn't matter what you go through in life. You know, I think about in the book of Philippians, which is a such an encouraging book, probably one of the most encouraging books in the Bible. Paul's writing from a jail cell. And I, this guy called in and he was like what we're talking about right now. He called my office the other day. He was all bummed out, discouraged, and he was going on and on and on and on. And I just had to stop him. And I just had to encourage him and be very blunt with him and just like, you're focusing on all these issues, all these problems, and it's not working out for you. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord and talked about Paul being in jail. Oh yeah, I get that. I was in jail. I'm like, that's not the, that's not the message. Yeah. The message is like, even though Paul was in jail, he didn't even think that like he saw it as an opportunity at that time. Like he saw God opening up doors, even in a prison cell, he was able to have joy, even through a tough circumstance. And that should be true. For us. Like, me personally, I can't live in negativity. If, if there's anyone in my Cohen, I, I told him the other day when he messed up his, his face and we're on the way, he was kind of getting ahead of himself. Oh man, this is going to happen. <laughs> it was funny. He's like, Did you think your face was going to fall off? Jackson. Yeah, that's you what you were. Oh. You remember Michael Jackson? <laughs> you were too young for that. Well, he knows. He knows all the music I grew up with, so he knew that Michael Jackson, like, the Pepsi commercial, like uh, I'm like Cohen. His hair actually caught on fire. You he's know. like, I'm Michael. This is how. <laughs> this is how it started. Yeah, dude, I'm serious. So, oh, but you're letting your words, your thoughts, get ahead of you, and what does it do? It brings fear. It brings overwhelm. Dude, stop. You're going to make it through this. Yeah. Everything's going to be okay. You're alive. You have your vision. Look at all the positive things. And that's true for people right now. Like that's why the Bible says to give thanks in all things. And you start, start, start thanking God for the small things to the bigger things of your life. And then perspective will, will help you. Um, cause there are opportunities that God has for all of us, but many people can miss out on what God has for them by just not living the Christian life by, by not walking by faith. Yeah. Because you live by fear, right? Living by fear. Fa you can't fear live by fear. and faith cannot coexist. They're not, they're mutual exclusive. So either you're operating in faith or you're operating in fear. 
and it's very easy to operate in fear with everything you know all the messaging uh going yes, on this very much. today but faith it's all about faith and walking by faith is dead without deeds right mm -hmm. so without deeds uh deeds are like it means you're doing something right so if you're not walking if you're just sitting and standing still and not doing anything you have no faith mm -hmm. right exactly so people that are like i have faith and you're not really doing anything then you really don't have faith mm -hmm. you can think it, but you really don't have faith yeah and how you can identify if you're complaining all the time you know sometimes people complain about so many different things i mean it's one thing to vent to a homie friend and like hey man pray for me that's cool do that but when you find yourself totally just you know sitting in your sorrows of you know all the bad things that are happening in your life you're not encouraging yourself from the lord you're not looking things through the the, the lens of the gospel the lens of what christ desires you to see because the bible tells me that the lord will lead god and direct us into all truth that in this world we're going to have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world these are the words of christ uh, let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me that i go to prepare a place for you so there's always the words of you talked about fear how many times from the old and new testament does it say do not fear the reason why is because man does fear they doubt and it's very easy for us to doubt and that's why we're given through scripture to encourage us that we're not alone that the days that we have here on this earth they are numbered by god i don't i need to fear um what's taking place in our nation in the world i won't live in fear when my number is called and the lord takes me home that's the time that i would go be with the lord this last year i lost my dad in april and you know it's very easy to reflect back and be like man if you would have gone to that one more doctor's appointment it just could have happened you know maybe he'd be here no and you can't even catch yourself going down that pathway because it was his time mm -hmm. it, it was his time and it seemed sudden to me and seemed sudden to my family but in reality it was god's timing right then and that is true with everything it goes into purchasing a home it's a relationship you come that you know that your spouse in the future all those things come in line i remember you like you thought you were going to be single for the rest of your life you know at that time when you were single and walking with god and like you were frustrated at times that's that was that's frustrating when you're have a girl around you pretty much your whole life yep and then all of a sudden you're like christian dating and <laughs> and then you're like you want you want to like be be in god's will yeah which it could be frustrating yeah yep that was a very that was a very tough time <laughs> then i met the girl in my dreams then she had a bunch of kids <laughs> and she's still the girl in my dreams <laughs> but you have to buy the book for that yeah. um all right well we have a few minutes left um we have a couple calls that we should probably grab. We have five minutes. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Um, I, I want to plug something. You know Christina Beaudreau? Yes. So we all know Christina Beaudreau, one of the ambassadors of whosoever's. She's going to be up at God Speak Calvary Chapel on September 24th, which is in a few days. It's ages 12 to 18, and it's called Identity. It's a free event, Calvary Chapel God Speak. Um, God, Calvary Chapel, God speak. Uh, the main pastor, I believe he's the president Rob, Rob of McCoy. Turning Point. Rob no, McCoy, no, no, Turning Point is Charlie Kirk and everything. Rob McCoy is the pastor there of uh, in Thousand Oaks, but he's also the president of Turning Point. Is he? Is he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So he's he, he travels with Charlie Kirk all yeah, over. Yeah, they're connected. I know that. Um, so that's the church, that's where they're at. Oh, we're gonna have Charlie Kirk at our church, right? Yeah, we haven't announced. Oh, here before we do that. Oh, we didn't oh, announce it. <laughs> We can. Uh, it's well, going to be October 10th. Okay, October 10th. But let me get back to this. My yep. ADD. Here we go. It's called uh, Girls' Night. Okay, Cohen, stay away. All right, you're too young. <laughs> Girls' Night. God speak. Girls' Night. Ages 12 to 18. September 24th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. with uh, Christone Chris Drew. Uh, get that. It's going to be epic. No, I was talking to Charlie Kirk. Yeah, Charlie Kirk's going to be at Calvary Chapel Golden Spring, October 10th at all three services, 8, 10, and 12. We'll start uh, blasting on our social media. I think we're actually going to announce it tomorrow uh, morning at, at the church. Uh, reach out to him. The guy, the guy's amazing. What, what What's the date again? October 10th. It's a Sunday morning. October It's only a few weeks away. 10th. I'm in town. 
Wait, yeah. it's on Sunday? Yeah, Sunday morning. All three so come out. Let's party. Yeah. This is going to be exciting. So he's going to do all the Sunday mornings. All three services, yeah. Wait, so he's doing it instead of Raw? Yes. All right. Yes. Charlie Kirk going down Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar. I'm, 8, I'm go 10, 12. You going to come, Cohen? Yeah. All right. Might learn something, kid. kid. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. So I think we have a few minutes left. Um. I'm going to plug the book because I want you guys to get it. And I want you to full send and get transformed by the book. It's called kill, kill the noise by Ryan Reese. It's on, uh, by wherever you buy books, it's available everywhere. And, um, what do we got going on? We are, we have a movie. We just got done with, uh, the Montana film. Have I showed you that film? No, I haven't seen it. Yet. I just got the final cut. You guys got to check it out. You got to watch it. Um, I'll send you the link when we're done here. So that film is done. We want to release that. That was actually one year ago when we were there is in that Montana. The one with Sunny, Sunny, when Sunny went okay, on tour. Yeah. So that's coming out. We're gonna do it. We'll set up a movie premiere at the church in Diamond Bar, okay. and then we'll do some other premieres across the nation, and uh, we'll just have a big party. It'll be amazing, and um, it's really, it's a really good film. I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, what else? So we are gonna be in Texas touring soon. You can go to the Whosoever's to check that out. You at the Whosoever's as well. You can buy products. You could donate. You can get the past radio shows. And what else? What else are we missing? I, I think that's the, the main thing. Going to all the websites, going to ryanreese.com, going to the whoever. There's many things, cool things in the works as well. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you follow on all the social media uh, platforms because we're going to communicate some cool things coming up. Yeah, we're going to actually, we got some cool radio stuff that we're we're working on right now. Yeah, that we'll be announcing soon. Um, I'm really excited about um, that, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what? Since we're gonna, we're just leaking information right now. I'm gonna yeah. do a little bit more leaking. Go um, I'm gonna start. Uh, come, I'm gonna start te- coming back to teach at the Calvary Chapel Bible Bar. Sick. Um, again, which I haven't done that for a while. I've been teaching all over, you know, all over the place, but um, be able to come back and and be a resident more at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar. So that will be fun. I'm excited. Um, the Bible app. Don't forget to go to the Bible app and, and look up Ryan Reese. And you'll see uh, we're dropping them um, different devotions. Kill the noise. The man God sent. And uh, follow me. Just going through the Gospel of John, doing the Bible app. You could get that all there. You could uh, do uh, do it with a friend. Sonny Sandoval from POD came out with the Alive, um, a devotion to the Alive lyrics for that huge song from the band POD. You can check that out. That's all on the Bible app. And there's so many other amazing things and people on the Bible app. So get it. We'll talk to you guys next weekend, right after the break. Or actually, next weekend. Peace. This has been the Ryan Reese Show. So we've been here in California. Yeah, find out more about Shut Ryan. everything down. Click on ryan reesecom Check us out. I thought it'd be a good opportunity for the who's to be active and doing ministry in this time right now since everything's shut down idaho's open so that means we can give the gospel out and reach as many people as possible we came up with ten thousand flyers 100 posters and i just charge it to idaho every whosoever's trip is completely insane life-changing guns god Fireworks, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going down. Skateboarding. I missed it. He came up to me and he's like, dude, what happened tonight was crazy. I've been to youth group, I've been to church, but I've never experienced what happened tonight. And I said, shut your mouth, dude, okay? And I said, wait till the camera gets here. <laughs> yeah, now I went from tour mode to daddy duty, so this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> You're like, why am I here? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Sometimes there's not answers to that. During this time of coronavirus, when everything's been put on pause, a lot of people were left to look in the mirror of asking themselves, who am I? Who am I without school, sports, you know, social media, friends, and all of these hobbies? God cares about the smallest details because he has a plan and he has a purpose for everyone's life. That's the message we share with the youth of the nation and of the world. He loves you and he has a plan for every detail of your life. And if you're willing to step out by faith, well, you're gonna watch God do the impossible. Keep coming, this is awesome. This is awesome, this is why I came.
We're saying there's best trick contest happening. The city doesn't know. No one knows. We don't even know if we're going to get shut down. But as far as I'm concerned, came up with the idea. God confirmed. So I just left and we went to Idaho. Same face. Not again.